All right, my dear students, we are studying accrued and prepaid income. And for that, we are going to do some practice. We have question number two. This is my own question. On 1st May 2000, uh, here it's not given. On 1st May, ARD realized that the premises was larger than required and sublet part of it to a tenant for an annual rent of 6000. This means we have uh, already taken property on rent and maybe a uh, part of the property we are giving it to someone else and we are giving the property to our tenant for annual rent of 6000 now this 6000 is basically an income from for mr ard why because we are giving a part of the premises to someone else and that party will be giving us our tenant would be giving us annual rent okay of 6000 so therefore it is an income for the business the tenant committed to pay the rent on 1st may august november and february so our tenant uh, requested us that uh, i am also going to pay you rent in four installments just like uh, you are also paying the rent to your tenant on in four equal installments okay now the year for mr ard is ending on 30th November now year is ending on 30th November now if we are receiving 6,000 rent in four equal installment this means uh, I'm going to divide 6,000 by four equal payments so I'm going to receive each payment for $1,500 okay so we need to make a rent receive account now as you may be aware that rent receive is an income account and for an income account we need to make uh, APA account APPA okay now before going through this lesson i will highly suggest you to go through the uh, concepts video first and that is accrued and prepaid income okay if you have learned the concepts then and only then you will be able to make this t account now what is this accrued prepaid prepaid accrued so i have written it with a pencil uh, because in an examination i am not going to write accrued or prepaid instead i am going to write balance brought down and balance carried carried down okay now there are two balance bd one is accrued income and one is prepaid income now what does accrued income means accrued income means that our tenant has not yet paid few months rent that belong to the previous year so at the start of the year uh, uh, they owe us the money okay so it is an asset for the business so the balance brought down would come on the debit side uh, if it's accrued income, if the balance brought down is coming on the debit side because it is an asset, it is a receivable, then the balance carried down would always come on the opposite side. Now, there can be a prepaid income. Prepaid income means we have received the money in advance, okay, but this uh, year has not yet been passed. So, our tenant has paid us few months extra rent and these extra rents, he has not used the property yet. Why? Because these months have not came yet okay these are uh, in the future date so it's a prepaid income it's a liability for the business we have received the money but we haven't earned this money yet okay so the opening balance for liability always comes on the credit side then the closing balance would goes on the debit side now as you may be aware that income has a credit nature so whenever we are going to receive payment from our tenant we are going to write bank would be debited and rent received would be credited okay now there can be more than one payments because the tenant is basically paying us in four equal installments in a year now rent receive is an income and the income has always has a credit nature now what happens at the end of the year end of the year this income account needs to be transferred to their income statement so the rent received that is credit originally we need to debit this rent receive account and we need to transfer it to where an income statement now uh, let us learn how to uh, calculate this income statement value now as you can see we have uh, given our property uh, on 1st may to the tenant and the year for mr ard is ending on 30th november now we need to count the actual number of months the property has been utilized by our tenant so i need to count from may till november uh, may june july august september five months october and november so basically there are seven months so our tenant has just used the property seven months this year because we haven't let out our property 
at the start of the year instead we have just given on the property um, uh, during the year that is on 1st May. Now as you can see the year is ending on November then the year must have been started on 1st December 2014. Now instead of giving out the property on 1st December we actually gave our property on rent uh, during the year that is uh, on 1st May. Okay, so from May till November, it is basically seven months. So applying the matching concept that we studied earlier, matching concept means that income and expenses shall be matched for the same accounting period. Now the 6,000 rent is the annual. Now what we need to do, we need to divide this 6,000 by 12 months in order to get the monthly rental. Monthly rental is basically 500. Now we need to multiply this 500 by how much? We need to multiply it by 7 months. So the 7 month rental would be 3500. Now uh, instead of charging, uh, instead of uh, booking or we can say uh, recording, uh, realizing the income for the entire 12 months, we are just going to uh, record uh, earned income that is 7 months income has been earned this year okay so the income statement would contain the exact amount uh, that we have used the uh, expense for how many months or we have earned the income for number of months now as you can see uh, the tenant has uh, promised us that he is going to pay us rent in four equal installment if i divide six thousand by four payments i am uh, will be getting fifteen hundred payment for one quarter okay so I'll be getting first payment on 1st May as soon as I have given the property uh, from one hand I'm going to hand over the keys and on from the other hand I'm going to get the rent for the first three months that is 1500. So I have uh, received the rent on 1st May first installment, second installment I have got on 1st August and the third installment on 1st November. Now as you can see the year ends on November. This means this year I am only going to receive three payments that is May, August and November and not the first February payment. Why? Because the first February uh, won't fall this year. Why? Because I have uh, let out my property after February that is on first May. So we are going to receive three payments this year. So first payment was on first May then on first August then the third payment last payment we are going to receive this year is on 1st November. Now as you can see uh, a year normally contain 12 months okay and year has a 12 months and this year uh, basically uh, each year we receive 4 payments okay if there are 12 months in a year and we receive 4 payments in any particular year what we need to do we need to divide this 12 months with 4 payments so each payment contain rent for three months each payment contain rent for three months now on first may as soon as i gave my property to the tenant okay for use uh, they gave me the rent for three months okay so on the first may i received the rent for may june and july okay after july i received the rent uh, on first august and this belongs to which months this relates to the months of august september and october so may june july then after july august september october after october november december and january now the third payment is important i have received the rent for november december and january now as you can see uh, our year being uh, ends on 30th november so therefore uh, our tenant has gave us the rent for December and January as well okay so these two months rent basically I have received extra so if I have received extra rent this is a prepaid rent now how much prepaid rent for two months would be uh, if 6000 is the annual rent and if I divide 6000 by 12 months so the monthly rental would be 500 or I can do it this way if 1500 rent is for three months then the monthly rent again would be 500 so what I need to do, I need to multiply this 500 by 2 months in order to get 1000 prepaid rent. Now this prepaid income my dear students is basically liability for Mr. ARD and if there was an opening liability it would come on the credit side and the closing liability or prepaid would come on the debit side. You can remember it this way that it is a liability. 
now another way to remember is that that uh, you can remember it another way and we are making an upper account a p p and a so the closing opening prepaid would come on the credit side then the closing prepaid must always come on the debit side now the two months extra rent that we have received for december and january does not belong to this year therefore it is a rental for the next year okay so this income should not be recorded this year instead it is a prepaid income and it will be recorded in the next year so instead of writing prepaid i am going to write the balance cd okay uh, and you can also calculate this uh, by another way if we total both of the sides as you can see the greater side is the credit side now the greater side uh, was 4500 credit side if i deduct 4500 and 3500 the balance would be the shorter side would be debit side okay now this balance carried down for prepaid would becomes balance brought down at the start of next accounting period now uh, let me do quick recap for this and the recap a uh, very easy way to understand is that the tenant is basically paying us the rent for three months in uh, in advance okay so three multiplied by three basically this year we have received nine month rent that is 4500 but the tenant has just used the property for seven months this year so therefore we cannot book the entire nine months rent for this year because for uh, two months of the rental belongs to the next accounting period okay so the extra rent that we have received for the next two months uh, shouldn't be recorded this year instead it is a prepaid income okay and this will be recorded in the next year so therefore it is a liability for us prepaid income is a liability for us this means we have received the rent but we haven't earned this rent yet so therefore it is a liability and uh, if uh, we vacate our property from a tenant so then uh, we need to return this rent to our tenant okay so therefore it is a liability therefore it is known as a liability now why does we do not have opening accrued and prepaid the reason for this is that that mr ard has just rented out the property this year okay so if it's the first year we do not have balance brought down either for prepaid or accrued okay and this uh, carried down for the first year would becomes balance brought down at the start of next accounting period now if the balance bd is coming on the credit side therefore it is a liability okay and when is an income a liability income can be a liability because we have received more income than we have earned okay then we have provided the service for or then we have uh, then we deserve okay so the extra income that we have received we are going to provide the service for that in the future and therefore it is the current liability for the business okay let us do some other exercises we have another question with the name of liana uh, liana is preparing her financial statement she provided the following information it's a past paper question what we need to do first of all we need to see the requirements uh, we need to make a rent receivable account so either the examiner says the rent uh, receive account or rent receivable account examiner means the same thing okay rent receive or rent receivable is the same thing and commission receive or commission receivable is the same thing as far as examiner is concerned so we need to make an income account so we can start with a p p a also and we can do it directly as well let us do directly this question without writing accrued prepaid accrued prepaid uh, liana is preparing her financial statement she provides the following information first october would be start of the year because it's a first okay uh, we have a rent receivable account balance that is credit balance now if there is a credit balance at the start of the year then the credit balance would come on the credit side and if it instead it was a debit balance then it should come on the debit side so if it's a credit balance uh, can we identify either it is an accrued income or it is a prepaid income yes there are two ways to identify this either it's a prepaid income or accrued income one way is that uh, we can use mnemonic uh, APPA as you remember that opening accrued come on the debit side and opening prepaid would come on the credit side. Now it's an APPA accrued, prepaid, prepaid and accrued. So that opening balance is two of them. Uh, debit balance is accrued income and the credit balance is a prepaid income. 
Now, if we do not want to write accrued or prepaid, we can also identify either it's an accrued income or prepaid income. Why? Uh, how? Uh, if it's coming on the credit side, then it's a liability. And if it's coming on the debit side, uh, then it is an asset. And why does an income becomes our liability? Income can becomes a liability because we have received the rental, but we haven't provided the uh, property premises yet. Okay. So therefore, we have received this income in advance. And if we have received income more than that we have earned, so the extra amount that we have received, it's a liability for us. And if instead the uh, balance BD is coming on the debit side, then it is an asset. And why would it become an asset? Because it is an accrued income. Okay. Now it's a, a prepaid income. Now this year, as you can see, we have to receive two payments, one for 6,700, another one for 3,100. Then when we receive the income, the entry would be bank account would be debited and the rent receive account would be credited. So the entry would be bank would be debit and the rent receive would be credited. Now, as you can see, this year we have received two separate uh, uh, payments. Now, uh, there is another entry payment. Uh, what does payment means? We have refund uh, for overpayment of rent receivable. This means our tenant has paid us the rent more than that we owes by mistake maybe or maybe uh, we were in need of this some money. So we ask them to pay this rent right now and we'll be uh, returning uh, it to them in the future. Now uh, when we return this payment to our tenant so the bank would go down bank account would be credit this time and rent receivable account would be debited. Okay rent receivable would be debited and we need to write bank again now the bank was previously written as well and this time as well now in, in order to differentiate these two entries i'm going to write refund uh, in front of it okay this transaction so this was a refund of the amount now uh, there is an additional information given the rent receivable amount to 12,000 a year this means in any particular year we receive annual rent of 12,000 this uh, makes monthly rent of 1000 okay as simple as that so if we are receiving rent of 12000 in any particular year this 12000 would need to be transferred to where an income statement now as you can see rent receivable is an income and the income it has normally credit balance okay rent receivable is basically income and income uh, by default has a credit balance now what happens at the end of the year at the end of the year, I need to debit this rent receivable account and the annual rental for this year would need to be transferred to where an income statement. Now, in this question, we are writing entire 12,000. Why? Because we haven't let out our, our property this year. Okay. Uh, as you can see, balance brought down is also given. Whenever we have a balance brought down for accrued or prepaid, this means uh, we haven't uh, started uh, doing this the first year. This may be second or maybe later years. Okay. So therefore balance brought down is also coming and we need to write income statement uh, entire 12 month. Now what happens if the examiner says that we have just uh, rented out property this year. If we have just rented out property this year, then it would be uh, the number of months we need to uh, calculate number of months that uh, the tenant has used the property this year. Okay, maybe six months or eight months. So in this year, uh, the tenant has enjoyed using our property for the entire 12 months. Okay, now uh, if we have already been given the income statement value, what we need to do, we need to balance these both sides and the shorter side now would becomes a balance CD. Now let us see which is the greater side, debit side or credit side. Now the greater side is debit side. Okay. So if the debit side is greater, this should be recorded on both of the sides and the shorter side would becomes a balance CD. Balance CD is basically balance carried down and this balance carried down, my dear students, would becomes balance brought down at the start of next period. Now after 30th September would becomes 1st of October. After September would become 1st October and this balance carried down would be a balance brought down. Now if the examiner asks you, so uh, either this 400 what does this 400 means it is a prepaid income or accrued income now there are again two ways to remember that now the one way to remember that is we uh, can make a uh, use mnemonic a and p 
as you can see it's an upper account a p and then p and a so if it's coming on the debit side then it is a accrued income uh, and if it's coming on the credit side it's a prepaid income now if you do not want to use uh, a p uh, p a you can uh, use your mind and you can see if it's coming on the debit side then it is an asset and if instead the balance brought down is coming on the credit side then it must be a liability now why uh, when does our income becomes an asset income would becomes an asset when it is an accrued income okay accrued income means at the end of the year the tenant still owes us the rent 400 okay uh, this year uh, the tenant has not paid the rent for maybe few days okay because the monthly if the monthly rent is 1000 this means the tenant has not paid us the rent for maybe few days okay so therefore it's a accrued income okay let us do one more exercise zikri is a retailer his financial year ends on 31st august if the year is ending on august then it must have been started on 1st of september okay ashley pays us we are zikri ashley is paying us a commission on goods purchased from ashley by zikri's customer uh, what is happening here we are referring our customers to go on ashley's shop and ashley in return is paying us the commission okay uh, for giving her business okay the commission is paid quarterly in areas quarterly this means every three months okay in 12 months there are basically four quarters and each quarter belongs to three months quarterly in areas what does areas mean areas mean accrued this means uh, we keep uh, on sending her customers and uh, after three months she pay us the amount uh, that belongs to us okay and as a token of uh, appreciation that we are sending our customers to her shop okay zikri provides the following information now at the start of the year as you can see commission is outstanding so either the examiner says outstanding or accrued or areas or unpaid or due it is all the same okay it, uh, it means the same thing now at the start of the year commission is accrued now what we need to do we need to make a commission receivable account now as you may be aware that it is an income account and for income we use uh, we can also use a mnemonic a p p a now instead of writing a p p a i can do directly as well now it, uh, as you can see at the start of the year commission is outstanding what does this mean this means uh, uh ashley still owes us the commission for last year and this is the outstanding amount she has not yet paid as the commission for customers we have already referred to them okay so this means uh, she owes us this amount 495 for the last year and for zikri it's a receivable it is an asset therefore accrued income is coming on the debit side a it's an accrued income on the debit side now as you can see this year if the year is being ending on 31st august 2017 therefore the year must have been started on 1st september 2016 okay last year now from 1st september 2016 as you can see uh, have we received all of these payments this year? Yes. After September uh, would become uh, comes uh, November, uh, October, November, December. Then uh, after December would become January, February, March. Then June. Uh, as you can see, the year is ending on August. Therefore, we have received all these payments in this year. Okay. So this year we have received four checks. So whenever we are receiving check, then the bank would be debit. If the bank is being debit, then the commission received would be credited. So we need to cross reference the commission receive account with the bank. So we need to write a uh, bank on the credit side. So the entry would be bank would be debited and the commission received would be credited. Now this year we have received four checks. Now what happens at the end of the year? As you can see at the end of the year, that is 31st of August. Commission is still outstanding. Outstanding means accrued income. Okay. So this means uh, rent is or uh, commission is always received in areas. Okay, uh, areas means we have provided the service, we have referred her the customers, but she'll be paying us later. Okay, now at the end of the year also she owes us this much amount. 
so for us it is an asset so opening accrued is coming on the debit side and the closing accrued would go on the credit side okay uh, opening accrued opening asset would be on the debit side so the closing of asset would come on the opposite side that is credit side now on what we need to do we need to balance this account at the end of the year now as you may be aware that the end of the year all income and expense account needs to be closed and we need to transfer it to where we need to transfer it to income statement now as you can see commission received is an income and it is credit in nature now what happens at the end of the year my dear students at the end of the year we need to transfer this amount to where an income statement now as you can see the bigger side is the credit side now the bigger side would comes on both of the sides and the shorter side it needs to be transferred to where an income statement okay one six eight five now this balance carried down would becomes balance brought down at the next accounting period after august would becomes first of september after august would become first september that is balance brought down so this means uh, our uh, agent uh, or we are her, her agent uh, we agree and our principal whom we are referring customers uh, she still owes us 392 and this is basically an asset for customers we have referred to them and this is the amount that they owe us still and this will be received in the next year that is 392 it is the current asset for the business so i hope dear students you are able to understand accrued and prepaid income concepts